The NFL playoffs are always one of the most fun times all year, so let's explore the 2024 NFL playoffs. On a snowy day in Buffalo, the Bills overpowered the Steelers to give them their fourth straight wildcard win. Buffalo jumped to an early lead over a mediocre Steelers team and wouldn't stop there. Josh Allen had a great run. Josh steps up and he's going to get the first down. Oh, and there he goes. No one's going to get him. Incredible breaks it for the touchdown. And Shakir sealed it off. Plus the nope. middle, Sherfield was knocked down with Shakir, knocked down inside the 10. Oh, what an effort! The play of the night! And the Bills win 31 to 17. Arrowhead Stadium is known as one of the hardest places for a road team to be. And now, it just got even tougher. The Miami Dolphins, who could have been hosting in the Sunshine State, now find themselves on the road in the freezing cold. Negative 4 degrees, frozen mustaches, helmets shattering from the cold, and not to mention they're playing Patrick Mahomes and Taylor Swift. The Dolphins just wasted so much potential this season in a brutal beatdown at KC. It's been the same story all year, they blow out crappy teams and sometimes drop 70. But when they gotta play the big boys, they're 1 in 5. Welp, make it 1 in 6 now. Going 1 for 12 on 3rd down doesn't help that much, and I bet Tyreek Hill wishes he never left Kansas City. Welp, too late now. Tyreek's the only reason Miami put points on the board, but now they're stuck losing 26 to 7. Exclusively on Peacock. Congrats. <laughs> the Game of the Underdogs After many years of tanking, the Houston Texans finally became a contender this year. In the draft, they took Will Anderson Jr. to step up the defense, and CJ Stroud for quarterback of the offense. Stroud would put up crazy throwing stats as a rookie and lead his team into the wild card after a winner go home in Indy. Who do they host? The Cleveland Browns. The Browns are one of the most disappointing teams in the league, and they were disappointed to drop to their fourth string quarterback, the 38 year old off the couch, Joe Flacco. Luckily, the former champ Flacco would have a resurgence and win four straight games to reach postseason play. But probably the most dangerous part on the Browns is their defense, led by Miles Garrett. But in their game against Houston, that ferocious defense did nothing. No sacks or turnovers were recorded all game, and CJ Stroud was cooking up Cleveland. The first half was almost a shootout, where the Texans even scored a 76-yard touchdown on a one-play drive. Nope. But the game soon started to slip away from the Browns. Joe Flacco, now down by 10, needed a score. Flacco. Pressure comes, gets rid of it. It's picked off. Steven Nelson takes it away. And he's looking to go the other way. Nelson has a convoy down the sideline. Touchdown. To make matters even worse, Flacco threw a pick six on the next drive. The Magic seemed to run out for Cleveland in an impressive season that ended in a 31 point blowout. And rookie CJ Stroud just became the youngest QB to win a playoff game. Dallas has an annual tradition, losing early in the playoffs with Super Bowl aspirations. The losing has now been going on for 30 years. It's usually to San Fran, and assuming Dallas makes the NFC Championship game, they can meet them there. But Dallas is also known for missing the NFC Championship game. 30 years straight, by the way. But things are gonna be different this year. Dak is having his best season yet, CeeDee Lamb is one of the best receivers, 
Dallas has a top D, and Coach McCarthy led them to the two seed. Plus, they're playing Green Bay, which should be a cakewalk. Green Bay is playing with house money right now. In year one without Rodgers, they were lucky to make the playoffs, and really have nothing to lose. The Cowboys, though, all the pressure's on them. So, okay, sure they're off to a rough start, but Dak will come back. Third and five, four-man rush. Prescott fires for Corks, and it's intercepted! Jair Alexander, he's got it, up on his feet, race into the end zone, and he's in! Touchdown, Green Bay! What's going on? The Cowboys haven't lost a home game in almost two years, but now the playoff choke seems to be getting to them. Prescott and CeeDee Lamb had no connection, and Green Bay's Jordan Love was smoking Dallas' secondary. Love would lead another strong first half drive to go up 20 to zip. By this point, every NFL fan was stunned that a high scoring team was not just being shut out, but their defense couldn't get a stop either. And it's not like the Packers are that dangerous on offense, but tonight they played their best game of the year. Jordan Love put up a perfect passer rating, and Aaron Jones dominated the ground game. Anyway, Dallas is a real playoff threat here, so they better score quick. Targets. Second and two here, though. Here's Prescott. In the middle, it's gonna be picked off! And no one in front of him! Darnell Savage! Touchdown! Bruh. What the dog doing? America's team builds up a bunch of hype. One of the best offenses and defenses, beating contenders like the Rams, Eagles, and Lions. All just to lose again in the wild card. Ironically, to Mike McCarthy's old team. Five straight touchdown drives by Love would bring Green Bay to lay a 48 bomb, the most points Dallas has ever allowed in a playoff game. This embarrassing defeat makes fans wonder what the change will be this offseason. Will it be Dak the playoff choker, or Coach McCarthy? Because we can't be giving Jerry Jones any more January heart attacks. But no matter what happens, everyone can say the phrase for one more year. How about them Cowboys? <coughs> the Lions are looking to win their first playoff game in 32 years, and they're hosting. But let's get some background. About a decade back, Detroit was being led by a good QB named Matthew Stafford, who always fell short of a playoff win. In 2021, Stafford had enough of Detroit and won a Super Bowl in his first year in LA. Meanwhile, Detroit took the QB that Stafford replaced in the Rams, Jared Goff. Goff had lost a lot of confidence after some poor seasons, and he was traded to Detroit in hopes of getting back to his playoff form. The Lions also brought in head coach Dan Campbell, a hardcore former player who bites off kneecaps. The new mentality Campbell brought into this losing franchise changed the culture, and Detroit did something unthinkable. A 12-win season and a 3-seed. And guess what? They just happened to face Matthew Stafford and the Rams in the wild card. Detroit would start off strong by scoring touchdowns on their three opening drives. Matthew Stafford and the Rams were also keeping up thanks to Puka Nakua. Nope. So at the half, Detroit led 21 to 17. While the first half had a lot of scoring, the second half was all defense. LA had a shot in Detroit territory to take a lead, but they settled for the field goal. 24-23 The Rams forced a 3 and out and now had a shot to win the game. Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup were cooking into Detroit territory, but a holding call forced him out of field goal range. Foul? Probably. But the Lions have been waiting for this moment for over 30 years, and it feels even better against their old QB. The Lions snap a 9-game postseason losing streak and are moving on.
the Philadelphia Eagles had high expectations for 2023. And they answered, going 10-1 with wins against playoff teams like the Bucks, Rams, Dolphins, Cowboys, Chiefs, and Bills. But a blowout loss against San Fran seemed to flip their season, and the team lost confidence. They lost 5 of 6 heading into the playoffs with a road game at Tampa. With the team a show of themselves, nope. the Eagles were blown out. They didn't even put up that much of a fight. The defense was just being picked apart by the legendary Baker Mayfield. And Jalen Hurts in the offense only put 9 points on the board. The tush push was going nowhere, the offense was going backwards, and the Eagles are eliminated. Lamar Jackson is now a two-time MVP and superstar quarterback on the Ravens. But the only thing he's known for is choking in the playoffs. However, this year as a one seed, Lamar finally stepped over the hump. He ran for 100 yards and dropped 34 points. The Texans didn't really stand that much of a chance, with the Ravens' elite defense shutting down CJ Stroud. In a dominating win, Baltimore heads to the title game. The Bills and Chiefs is one of the greatest rivalries, but one that is dominated by KC in the playoffs. Buffalo has consistently failed to get over the hump, but this year, they have a shot for revenge. This time at home. Patrick Mahomes has never played on the road in postseason play, and Josh Allen and Buffalo are red hot. Devoted fans cleared out the snow, waiting for them to finally beat Patrick Mahomes and it feels like the perfect time for it to happen. The first portion of this game was a shootout. Josh Allen was scrambling for big gains and touchdowns, while Mahomes was throwing dimes to Travis Kelsey. And second down, launch wide open! Kelsey has the touchdown! An exciting half had Buffalo leading 17-13. But straight off the bat, the Chiefs stormed down the field and reclaimed the lead. A long Buffalo drive also brought them deep in Kansas City territory. Sliding left. On the go. Throws. End zone. Touchdown! The Bills score from 13 yards out. Shakir holds it in. Finally, the Chiefs answered back to change the lead the fifth time this game and go up by three. In the fourth quarter, all Buffalo needed was a field goal to tie or touchdown to win. Welp, this drive stalled out quick, just punted away. Going down win with this one. Fake. Hamlin is stopped short, and that'll be the first turnover. A fake? In your own territory? Well, Pacheco's running like a madman and Casey's gonna score again. Holy crap, they blew this. He wants to go up two scores. Here's the toss. It's Hardman. And Hardman is stopped just short. Hey, the ball went through the end zone. Oh, my gosh. They may rule him down. The Bills are saying that ball was fumbled through the back of the end zone. Oh, my goodness. Wow, what a break for Buffalo. So what do they do next? Three and out. Luckily, Mahomes would punt the ball right back into Buffalo's hands. With eight minutes left for a potential game-winning drive. Josh Allen was squeezing in multiple passes and burning up clock. But now it's fourth down. Fourth and three. Over to Shakir. He's going to get it. Another clutch third down conversion, and now the Bills are deep in Chiefs territory. Buffalo missed a couple opportunities, but at least they could tie it. McDermott, after his one for three performance last week, he has tremendous support in the building. If he has to make one for us, with the game on the line, he will. 44 yards pass. No, he doesn't make it. Wide right. Wow. The two most dreaded words in Buffalo. Wide right? Wide right. That's it. Buffalo's cursed. You gotta feel so bad for all the bad luck this team has had, and the sadness continues. And now the freaking Chiefs advance again.
Green Bay at the one seed 49ers on a rainy day. Green Bay started with the ball, looking to upset another top team on the road. Some strong Aaron Jones runs gave Green Bay a 3-0 lead. A big sack gave the ball back to Jordan Love, who stormed back down the field to end the first quarter. Now San Fran had to get a stop. Looks like quarterback sneak. That's what they're going to do. Love up the middle. Boy, is it close. I mean, based on the official at the top of the screen, he looked like he was short of that first down. Brock Purdy and the Niners took that momentum and brought their dangerous offense into Green Bay territory. A dime to Kittle gave the 49ers a 7-3 lead before the Packers tacked on another field goal. To end the half, the Green Bay defense blocked the Niners' field goal to keep the score at 7-6. Nope. So far, this had been a defensive battle where both teams made some big stops. San Fran is overall the much better team, but Love and Green Bay were playing with that momentum from the Dallas win. Now they're in a close game at San Fran with a good shot at winning. It's Love. Couple fakes going wide open in the end zone. It is belted as he gets the feet down. He is touchdown. But the Niners answered right back. Christian McCaffrey had a big play. Kittle followed that up, and CMC finished off the drive. They get it off. McCaffrey, right side, big seam, cut, 30. McCaffrey! Touchdown, San Francisco! This game had suddenly turned into an offensive shootout, and Nixon brought the kickoff for 73 yards. That field position made the touchdown easy, and now Green Bay led 21-14. Unfortunately, when the Packers tried to run away with it, an interception added a field goal for San Fran. Now it's the fourth quarter, and the 49ers are down. A promising drive quickly flamed out, and losing seemed like a big possibility. For the great season the Niners have had, it'd feel wrong for the season to end this soon. But if you remember two years ago, the 49ers upset the number one seed Packers on the road. Now Jordan Love is looking to do the same. Wilson, 41 yard try for him. Wilson, no! Wide left! And great job, Carlson. An 82% chance at victory slipped away, and Brock Purdy led a touchdown drive. Going. Purdy now, near side, there's a completion to Jennings again. Here's Purdy, standing, loading up, has a man in his court, Chris Conley, in some trouble. Got room to run if he wants it, he's going to take it. Purdy, inside the 10 and diving near the 6. McCaffrey, McCaffrey scores! 49ers in front! Pressure up the middle, runs away, throws across his body, and that is picked! 49ers have it! Greenlaw! Green Bay blew a pretty winnable game, but they should be happy for how far they went. And the 49ers reached the championship game. Again. The Lions were rolled 6.5 point favorites hosting Baker Mayfield in Tampa, their highest in playoff history. In the first quarter, Detroit's defense picked it off and put on a quick three. The Bucks would answer back, tied at three in the second quarter. Jared Goff and the Lions would go down the field and score a touchdown. And some great plays by Mike Evans brought Tampa to a touchdown drive to tie it again. As underdogs, the Bucks had fought hard to keep this game tight. The defense forced punts, and Baker led another touchdown drive to tie it at 17. But with the Lions being the better team, Jameer Gibbs had a great run. Punch on defense. Second and two. Gibbs. Good move to the open field. Gibbs accelerates. Gets to the end zone. He's in for the touchdown. And Amonor Ross St. Brown also scored to send Dan Campbell and Detroit to one game away from the Super Bowl. Now they go to San Fran.
Lamar Jackson hosted a legacy-defining game against Patty Mahomes and the Chiefs for a trip to the Super Bowl. But sadly for the Ravens, the mistakes killed him. The defense did their job by holding KC to only 17 points. But Lamar Jackson was choking this game away. A three and out on their first drive, followed by a bad fumble in the second quarter. The Ravens were forced to punt four straight possessions when they needed a score down by 10. Now it's the fourth quarter and they need a score. Lamar and Zay Flowers were going down the field, but then it was backtracked by a personal foul. Anyway, Baltimore's about to score. Second and eight from the nine. Jackson to Flowers. He dives. The ball came out. It's recovered by Kansas City. Did the ball come out before he broke the plane? Zay Flowers, are you serious? Next drive, Lamar throws a horrible interception into triple coverage. Patrick Mahomes iced the game with a third down catch and beat the Ravens 17 to 10. Baltimore ended up killing themselves with unnecessary roughness penalties and turnovers, the main reason why they got eliminated. So what we learned from the AFC? The Ravens and Bills are chokers, and the Chiefs head to yet another Super Bowl. So who do the Chiefs meet in the Super Bowl? San Francisco vs. Detroit was a tale of two halves. The 49ers have continuously fell short in the NFC Championship game, and haven't won a Super Bowl since 95. Right now, Christian McCaffrey is lighting up the offense and looking to bring them to a Super Bowl against the Chiefs. Meanwhile, the Lions of Jared Goff are playing with their best shot at a Super Bowl in franchise history. So with this fact in mind, Detroit started off strong. First down, another fake. Come with Jamison Williams, the speedster, has a block. Williams, cuts out, 25, 20, still on his nope. feet. Jamison Williams scores! A missed field goal would set up another impressive Lions touchdown drive. Brock Purdy and the Niners answered back with a touchdown to close the gap to 7, but an interception set nope. up another Detroit score. 3rd and 10, 4 man rush, Purdy in some trouble, lets it go over the middle and it's picked off! Rodriguez has it, breaks the tackle, and he's inside the 25! Now it's Gibbs, trying to get to the edge, gets a block nope. on the quarter, makes a man miss, Gibbs, hits out the 5, touchdown Detroit! The Lions, on the road as underdogs, were smoking San Fran 24-7 a 17-point lead. In the second half, now they find themselves in 49er territory with a shot at scoring some more. But now it's fourth down. Stop to throw. Here comes pressure. Escape. Fires over the middle and it is incomplete. Really, Reynolds? Well, the 49ers probably won't go anywhere after that stop. Who leaves? Here's Purdy with a lot of time. Steps into one. Watching deep. Going for Brandon Ayuk. It is. Oh, he caught it off the ricochet. Penalty. Is he in? This play seemed to entirely flip the momentum. Brock Purdy and McCaffrey kept on scoring while the lines were imploding. A bad fumble by Jameer Gibbs gave San Fran great field position. Multiple drop passes and a short throw by Goff turned the ball over on 4th down. Soon, a 27 point turnaround had Detroit down by 10 points. At this point, it was too late to come back and the 49ers won 34-31. Detroit finds a way to spoil a magical season and Brock Purdy and San Fran meet the Chiefs in a Super Bowl rematch. Subscribe and I'll see you later.